Hello everyone. It's been a busy week. Honestly, haven't been vlogging at all, which is why I'm doing this now. Pretty much last minute. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, though. My friend Guni, from uh, originally from back home, but now he lives elsewhere. Uh, he reminded me of a uh, of an animated project that we once worked on called The Way Home. And according to him, his inbox is just filled with messages from fans who just want to see a reflection vlog on uh, on the work we did, that we did on uh, that show. That show that never came to be. His words, not mine. I'm not perjurizing myself. So since I have nothing else to vlog about, I guess it is the perfect time to reflect on the way home. The show that we worked on that never really went anywhere, tragically enough. And even though we spent months uh, and even years working on it and trying to get it off the ground, uh, even though and even though it fa we failed to do so, the work that we did on that show ultimately got me where I am today. So I guess it is a pivotal part of my origins. So the story behind this really begins in 2013. Uh, it was a similar time when I was working on my comics and shit like that. I don't know, like, there was just like this huge creative explosion that happened in my life around that time where I had worked for a long time doing shit that I didn't want to do and I would continue to do so but I kept trying to work on the side on projects like this because this because comics and animation that is what I really want to do in life and uh, I desperately just wanted to get into that in industry and I just that and I just desperately wanted to get into that industry so this is late 2013 and I am recovering from a hernia operation and as I'm lying in bed for weeks I was watching a lot of cartoon shows and thinking up ideas of my own type of cartoon shows uh, it was around this time that I came up with the idea for Renegades and uh, like the initial idea for Raccoon Kid as well like just the character itself uh, and I came up with the idea for The Way Home show about a young boy and his mutated dog trying to find their way back home through a post-apocalyptic landscape. Now the original version of the story was way more goofy, way more silly and it wasn't until I pitched it to my friend Gwilene and my friend Arnar, both of whom uh, work with me in uh, our Icelandic production company Fender Films. Now. When I pitched the idea to them, they were both kind of into it. Uh, but Gwune suggested that we would shift the, the tone of the story from sort of goofy, silly stories to a little bit more serious, a little bit more Avatar The Last Airbender. And once he suggested that, like the wheels really started turning. We, I started doing concept work, we started pitching story ideas, and eventually we decided, you know, you know what, let's, uh, let's do a proof of concept tra uh, trailer. Like a five minute short, animated short, that we will use to pitch this idea to, to uh, the Icelandic Film Fund and uh, other Icelandic production companies. So we uh, revamped the story to fit a more serious story structure and at that point we started going deeper into why the world was in the state that it was what sort of political factions or groups of survivors could pose as threats uh, what were the threats of the world we created these uh, these bug-like alien creatures that come out at night and there was this uh, this group called the Remnants, which was all that was left of the American government, led by a, a fascist dictator named Carter, who envisioned himself as this sort of savior of uh, the world, that only he could save the world, basically. But with his more of a serious story structure, we decided to focus a lot more on the characters and what their struggles were in this 
this extremely perilous world. So the main character is Bo, uh, a 13 year old boy, he was either 13 or 15, I can't entirely remember. Uh, he was supposed to have survived the apocalypse basically because he got locked in his grandfather's bomb shelter as he was staying there for uh, like a summer vacation or something like that and he's trying to make his way home uh, back west to Oregon that's where his family is and he has his dog with him but his dog eventually like at some point in the past fell into like this radioactive goop and turn into the, like this giant green mutant and became very sentient and talkative but he's like super stupid his name is Harvey and uh, as they travel uh, they meet this girl named fuck what was her name was her name Maggie no I did not have another female character named Maggie good god what was her name uh, her name was this I'm very sorry it's been a long time uh, and she was looking for her brother and he had been taken prisoner by this uh, uh, evil general dude who was gonna be a reoccurring villain throughout the series I'm gonna sit up to this tree <sighs> there we go so back home we have a uh, a national film fund associate and I don't know not a good translation of it but there is a but it's sort of state run I guess and uh, you can pitch your your film scripts or projects and they can decide if they want to fund it or not sadly the people running that shit uh, have a very specific idea for what type of projects they want to fund and there are very few other places to go if you want to find funding for your projects outside of that. So we made this five minute proof of concept trailer. We got Icelandic actors, really talented people to work on basically an Icelandic version of it. Because we intended to have an Icelandic version that would uh, be broadcast locally and then make an English dub specifically with the intention of selling it internationally because frankly it has never made sense to me to make anything back home specifically in Icelandic because the the maximum demographic that you can ever reach is about 300,000 people and you're never gonna reach all of those 350,000 give or take and it's just that that's just stupid it's like building a beautiful ship and then deciding to sail in a lake like the fuck anyway so that was our idea uh, nobody else back home seemed to understand that idea uh, the National Film Funding Association film fund whatever uh, they did not get it at all they did not also understand uh, what our demographic was. Was it for kids? Was it for adults? Uh, we intended it for kids or well we intended it to appeal to kids but to be also able to appeal to adults and we the way we decided to write this was that it took the the child audience very seriously sort of similar to what Avatar The Last Airbender did uh, so we'll be tackling with semi-adult themes and uh, like real-life stuff like war and shit. Uh, the National Film Fund did not really get behind that. They did not... Uh, they were not feeling the groove, so to speak. But we set up a meeting with a one of the biggest production companies back home and uh, in the meeting we were sort of interviewed by a major Icelandic celebrity major Icelandic celebrity and uh, the meeting went actually really well like he really liked it and we were just absolutely thrilled because he was he uh, we had already done a treatment of the first season it was gonna be about eight episodes he liked the animation style uh, he seemed to get what that what demographic we were going for and it made sense to him 
that this would be aimed at a domestic and international markets. So he told us uh, he was going to get back to us, but he wanted to see an English dub as soon as possible. Now we, the people who had worked on the Icelandic version of it, were absolutely thrilled and we decided we were gonna do the English dub as fast as possible. Here, this is where the problems really started to hit us uh, because the guy who was in charge of our uh, sound design, or sound recording and sound mixing everything, uh, he was first very much on board with doing this as fast as possible and then he kept getting delayed and he refused to hand over everything uh, for us to sound mix uh, for him which I mean is understandable but it just there was just setback after setback after setback and eventually we got back from the uh, from the guys from the uh, from the production company and they decided not to go with it because the at that point having shown other people because having shown other people in the company our clip uh, they were also kind of confused by the demographic now maybe we sh could have done a better job at uh, explaining exactly how we were gonna go about everything but it seemed clear to us and it seemed clear to the guy who interviewed us so I don't know people back home tend to be a little bit close-minded about shit like this so uh, and whenever I've pitched this idea at people here uh, they get it and they seem excited about the story so we eventually managed to get another guy to do the English dub for us uh, we had to replace one of the actors uh, we got the English dub but at that point nobody was interested in the project anymore and uh, this was like early 2014 at this point and we kept setting up new meetings with the National Funding Association, whatever, and uh, they kept saying no, and eventually me and Kudene were like, okay, so maybe maybe we could go a different route. Maybe we can turn this into a comic. And we, uh, we actually made, uh, Kudene wrote and I illustrated like two issues. We basically took the first episode and split it into two 20-page issues or 22 pages. Can't remember. Uh, and for like the first part of 2014 or the s later parts of 2014, I was uh, I was working on illustrating that shit, and we had. We then had a meeting with uh, one of the major publications back home. And the woman who interviewed us uh, was very much into it. She was like, yeah, we need more comics in uh, the Icelandic publication system. In the Icelandic publication world. And we're like, fuck yeah, let's do it. And as she got back to us like a month later, I was like, nah, nobody's interested in it and it will probably cost too much. Uh, yeah. That was, <laughs> that was always like, ugh. Like every single meeting we had about this project, Everybody was so into it. Everybody was just so like, yeah, let's do this. And then a month later, it was like, yeah, yeah, no, uh, let's not. <laughs> it was, uh, it was so fucking frustrating. I remember standing. We eventually did decided to do like one final hail mary uh, attempt at getting funding from the the National Funding Association Film Fund, and. Uh, and uh, again, it failed. And I remember standing out, this was probably in December or like early 2015 at this point, like the project had been going on forever, it felt. And I remember just me and Glinda just standing out in the freezing fucking cold, just be like, you know what? I can't do this anymore. We can't do this anymore. Let's just put the project on ice and just kind of forget about it for a little while like let's go do other things maybe if we both get successful we'll revisit this project eventually one of the other things that made me kind of sad about the fact that this show didn't ever pick up 
was that we had some really talented people working on this. Our actors were absolutely top-notch. Gunn is a, just a fucking wonderful writer. Uh, Arnaud, our producer, is just an absolute just an absolute powerhouse when it comes to organizing this shit. You can always trust on him. And it was just, it was one of those things that at the beginning it seemed a little bit too good to be true. Like everything was just going so perfectly. So obviously the doors had to get slammed in, in our faces. And the thing I like about these reflection vlogs is that even though there's sometimes projects that we're finished or we're just small. They're all like essential parts in uh, what made me the artist that I am today. Like I am here because I worked on those things. And my experiences from trying to make those things, whether successfully or unsuccessfully, are literally the reasons for why I'm here in Burbank today. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an important part of who I am as a person. And I feel like that does need to be addressed. <laughs> so anyway, shout out to all the wonderful people and artists who uh, worked on the way home with us. I'll put down links in the description. And I'll see you guys next week with something actually fun.